guys and welcome back to my channel. So for today's episode of Fossil Friday I thought I would give a talk on fossil sites within the UNESCO World Heritage List. So World Heritage sites come in many forms so they all have different kind of heritage and values and I thought it'd be interested to talk to you guys today about the fossil and paleontological ones and in doing so hopefully open a few discussions for topics to talk about. For instance one thing I've noticed is that under the category of fossil sites comes anthropology. Now for those of you who don't know what that is, it's to do with you know human evolution and our ancestors and kind of more cultural aspects but obviously there are you know million year old human bones found and there's this argument that paleoanthropology should be under the paleontology category but also it could be under the archaeology category and they're more like because um, the UNESCO label the sites as cultural, natural or mixed. So I feel like the natural ones are the paleontological ones, the cultural ones are the anthropology ones because they're the ones that you know showcase how we lived you know way back when um, you know so the first examples of us getting shelter fire that type of thing um, so it's kind of an interesting one and it's definitely not a f it's not black and white there's no fine line but I feel like paleontologists need to decide where that line sits so I really hope you guys enjoy I'm gonna switch now to my presentation so as I previously said I'm gonna be talking about geo heritage on the world heritage list and more specifically fossils because there are many themes and categories which I will mention further on in my presentation that categorise the geo heritage, which is basically any geological value kind of thing. So I thought I'd start off by showcasing all the other World Heritage sites. So there are currently 1,121 sites around the world. So you can see here they're all different colours. So that's because the yellow ones are of cultural significance, the green ones are natural, and then the ones that are yellow and green are a bit of both. And then the ones that are red are unfortunately under threat and in danger. So here we have the sites that are classed as geological under the UNESCO's website. So you can see there's a lot less, but there's still about 146 of them. So there's still quite a significant number. And then these are the 13 themes that were identified by the ICUCN framework in 2005. So they did a thematic approach to geological world heritage, and this was what they came up with. So today I'm going to be talking about number five, which is fossil sites. And they defined this as the record of life on Earth represented within the fossil record. So I thought I would do a bit of background for you guys. So fossils and paleontology hasn't always been an accepted concept. So for example, it wasn't actually universally agreed upon until the 19th century, and this was mainly due to religion. So for many scientists in Victorian England, extinction was directly related to the biblical flood. So many people believed that fossils were just an example of evidence of this biblical event. So they saw them as like failed creations on the path to perfection. So evolution was wasn't actually an accepted thing until not that long ago. So fossil sites and paleontological heritage, Wadrick Wells in 1996, I will try and link down below these frameworks that I'm referring to in this presentation if you would like to check any of them out. He defined that fossils form the evidence used in reconstructing Earth history and the ancestor relationships. And there's a few criteria that is used to define this further and I've just put some nice paleontological pictures for you guys. So the fossil record is biased, so we're never going to get a perfect picture of all the time periods, and this is down to the fossilization process itself. You know, there are the perfect conditions for fossils to form, and there are the wrong conditions. So unfortunately, it's going to be biased, there's going to be favoured time periods, so the fossil record that we have represents only a tiny fraction of all the organisms that have lived on Earth. So we're never going to be able to go back in history and, you know, fill in all the gaps. We've just got to try and piece together with what we've got and theorise in between. So we also need to take a lot of care in allocating World Heritage status to these fossil sites so we don't diminish their value. Not every site that has fossils is going to get a World Heritage status and that's because we're going to liquidate the ones that are of exceptional value if we do that. And this image on the right here, I know my face is blocking my caption, it's a fossilised turtle from the Messel Pit World Heritage site which is located in Germany. So there's a selection criteria, and now there's a bit of a debate on what the on what the selection criteria should be based upon, whether it should be based upon the quality or preservation of the fossils, on the event that made them occur, on the diversity of the species present, on the geography, for example, should all continents have an equal representation, or should it be on the best chronological sequence, you know, should every geological period have equal number of sites? 
or should it just be on universal appeal? For example, dinosaurs, you know, everyone loves them. Should we be using that as the criteria to select the sites on? Now, I'm not going to read all of these out because there is quite a lot, but there is a recommendation for the selection criteria written by Roderick Wells in the 1996 framework. And he recommended these nine points on how we can, you know, decide on creating a site. So when you have an idea of a fossil site, you can kind of go through these recommendations to see if it has a chance to go on the World Heritage List. So they're to do with specific time periods, they're to do with the preservation status, that type of thing. And then the IUCN made a checklist. So once you identify a site, it has to go through an evaluation process. So this is, uh, they put forward these 10 questions you should ask yourself regarding the fossil site on whether it should get that status. So here we have the natural fossil sites as per the UNESCO website. So we can see there's not many of them, but they're dotted around and one is in danger. So we can see that red one in Africa there. And then these are the cultural ones. So again, they're the yellow kind of diamond shaped ones. And then these are the mixed ones. So there's only four or five of the mixed ones. So here we have them all together. So there's 48 in total, two are transboundary, one is in danger, and then the rest are split between the three categories. And here I just outlined that further. So it's just a bit nicer. So you can see the distribution. So the majority of the fossil sites are natural, but there is a significant number of these cultural sites. And as I said earlier, the cultural ones tend to be of anth I can never say this word anthropological value. There we go, rather than paleontological. So this is one thing I wanted to talk about, the representativeness of the sites, because the category, you know, fossil sites, you think automatically of, you know, paleontology and the rock record, but it also tends to include the, these anthropology sites. And the term paleoanthropology uh, paleo does infer that it should be under the paleontological category. But from reading, you know, certain papers and Wells in 96 also agreed that they shouldn't be classed as fossil sites and they should potentially have their own category under the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So it's kind of an open debate. And for example, the fossil hominid sites of South Africa literally say fossil hominid. And these are fossil, the fossils found here have enabled the identification of several specimens of early hominids, more particularly of Paranthropus, dating back between 4.5 million and 2.5 million years, as well as evidence of the domestication of fire 1.8 million years ago. So they're very important sites still, and especially for the cultural value of our kind of our own evolution of humans. Um, but whether they should be under the fossil site category is an open debate, but I, I feel like they're two separate categories and the line in the middle is just a little bit blurred, but um, it's open to your own opinion. I just thought I would, you know, start the conversation going kind of thing. So now I'm going to talk about a few case studies for you guys. So I thought I would start with a natural fossil site, and this is the Canadian Rocky Mountain Parks, which is a World Heritage Site. And within this site, it's home to the Burgess Shales. So you might have heard of this um, site, and it's an amazing fossil locality. And under this criteria eight, it is classified as one of the most significant fossil areas in the world. It has exquisitely preserved fossils, and they record a diverse, abundant marine community dominated by soft-bodied organisms. So what's amazing about the Burgess Shale is that it's not just the hard parts of these organisms that have been fossilized, it's the soft body parts too. So we get pretty much a complete picture of what the you know environment was like nearly 540 million years ago. So this is a really exceptional site, it's got amazing scientific value and it's just a natural phenomenon and so beautiful as well. So that's why it got the status and I've put a pitch, some pictures on the left as well. And so I thought I would define what criteria eight is. So according to the IUCN, it's the geological process category and it's uh, it can be subcategorized as well. And part B is for the record of life. So this subset includes paleontological properties. Um, and as I said earlier about the thematic study, it considers the role of such properties in the World Heritage List. So here is a, another example. So this is the Australian fossil mammal sites. So this got its status in 1994, and they are a superb illustration of the key stages of evolution of Australia's unique fauna. So really amazing as well. And I really recommend, you know, if you get a chance to visit these at some point, do or just research them because they, they've been given the status for a specific reason and they are exceptional. 
And uh, I uh, showed you guys earlier about that fossilized turtle, um, and that was from this Messel Pit fossil site in Germany. So this was given its status in 1995, and the Messel Pit provides the single best fossil site which contributes to the understanding of evolution and past environments during the Paleogene time period. So it's really exceptional as well. So then I had to include the Dorset and East Devon coastline. So you guys might know this as the Jurassic Coast, and it is, of course, a World Heritage Site as well. So this was given its status in 2001, and under the Criteria 8, the coastal exposure along the Dorset and East Devon coast provides an almost continuous sequence of Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous rock formations spanning the Mesozoic era. So this is why it's a World Heritage Site, because we've got this continuous sequence of rocks, which wouldn't normally be exposed if it had mean for tectonic activities that has almost flipped them and within these rocks they're not just rocks we also get the fossilized content so that's another reason why it's got a status and it's because of the globally significant fossil localities and it shows both vertebrae invertebrates marine and terrestrial and so it's really amazing for both educational purposes science and also geotourism so i'm sure you guys are aware of the jurassic coast because i've probably spoken about it a fair few times but i just thought i'd include it into my presentation so I thought I would also refer to the site that is in danger. So this is the only fossil site that is under threat. So this is the Lake Takana National Park in Kenya. So this has only recently got its status in 2018, and it's got amazing deposits that contain pre-human mammalian mammalian? Am I saying that right? I don't know. And molluscian and other fossil remains that have contributed more to the understanding of human ancestry and paleo environment than any other site in the world but it is under a lot of threats. So these threats include severe droughts, livestock encroachment into the property, impacts from climate change, poaching, siltation, receding water level, human wildlife conflicts, etc. So it's under a lot of threats, but it is flagged by UNESCO as being in danger. So there will be a management plan on how we can, you know, try and control these threats to not destroy the amazing site that is the World Heritage Site here. So here is a summary of the natural fossil sites. So I've tried to remove the anthropological one, so it does also include one of the mixed sites. So I've kind of categorised it as more 28 sites than the original 48 that UNESCO came up with. And I think the anthropological ones should potentially have their own category um, rather than the being classed as fossils. But it is a blurred line and it hasn't had much discussion on the topic. So I'm intrigued to see what you guys say about it. But that's what I got for you guys today. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to conclude in a bigger image of me. So I will see you in a second. So that's all I got for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think of this topic and your opinions on it. Um, and if you enjoyed, please subscribe for more and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.